1,500 residential units have been either completed or have been approved for construction in the downtown area. Now, over at East Long Beach, Douglas Park has been a huge success, transforming from an aerospace manufacturing hub to a vibrant new development. Douglas Park is now the largest private commercial development in Long Beach and will be home to nearly 30 businesses, bringing more than 5,000 jobs to the city of Long Beach. And just last week, we announced that the Nordstrom Rack and Whole Foods are coming to Douglas Park. And right next door, the Long Beach Airport continues to be the easiest place to fly. It was just named this last year a top 10 best airport in America for the third year in a row. So there's great, thing, great things happening in that part of town. And I'm also excited that is on track to break ground late this year. Second and PCH will bring new retail and dining options to our city and revitalize one of our key entrances to Long Beach. In Bixby Knowles, Steelcraft is the first container development in our city. And if you haven't been, there are great local eateries and a local brewery. And along Atlantic Avenue in Bixby Knowles, you are witnessing a Long Beach success story. 2017 will also be great for North Long Beach bringing all sorts of new important developments and along Anaheim and Cambodia Town and Zafirina District. And I want to ask you tonight to join me in thanking the Long Beach City Council because all of these projects that I just described would not be possible with their relentless leadership and support. So please give them a big round of applause. I also tonight want to mention one of our key drivers to the local economy, and that's healthcare. Long Beach has amazing hospitals serving our city and our region. We've got Memorial, we've got Miller's Children's and Women's Hospital, we've got, of course, Community Hospital, St. Mary Medical Center, and the VA. All, every single one, has expanded and the largest Scandal. Let's thank them for keeping our city healthy. What you're seeing as you walk, bike, or drive around Long Beach reflects overall positive trends. Now, unemployment reached a nine year low, and we ended 2016 at 5.6%, down from 14.5% in 2009. In addition, minimum wage earners received a raise, and we added almost 9,000 jobs to the Long Beach economy just this last year. We also issued nearly 900 new business permits. It was also one of the best years ever for tourism. 6.8 million people attending Long Beach attractions, generating $26 million for our city budget. Absolutely. Now, many of you may not realize this, but the theater and the convention center that we're in tonight are actually city buildings that are privately managed. And under the leadership of Steve Goodling and the CBB and, of course, Charlie Brown, this facility is recognized as one of the best facilities in the United States. Under their leadership and working with our arts community, the Terrace Theater and the new Beverly O'Neill Theater have become a true performing arts center by becoming home to all groups across the city, like the Long Beach Symphony, Long Beach Opera, International City Theater, Musica Angelica, Camarada Singers, the Long Beach Ballet, and Musical Theater West. And having all these groups in the same center creates exciting synergy and programs for Southern California. And the recently adopted 1% for the arts will increase support for these groups and other artists and organizations 
throughout the city of Long Beach. So thank you all for supporting the 1% for the arts, and thank you to the Long Beach City Council. Our incredible aquarium in the Pacific will break ground next month on a major expansion that will attract new visitors to our city and enhance their incident space. And of course, our Queen Mary Task Force now has a vision for the 43 acres of land surrounding our iconic ship. So all of this progress is great, but we know there's still more to do, and we want to make it even easier to open and grow a business here locally. That is why I've asked the Economic Development Commission to develop a 10-year blueprint to guide our economic future. In March, they will present their blueprint to the Long Beach City Council, which will guide our economic development efforts over the course of the next decade. Let's give them a big round of applause for all of their work. And to meet the ever-changing demands of the world, we must also innovate. Long Beach has been named a top 10 digital city for the last six consecutive years. For starters, we have over 300,000 of you engaging with us on social media. You also downloaded over 100,000 ebooks and magazines from our new digital library. And we are deploying, and we are deploying new technology to all of our departments including new software to manage our city's fleet, new online construction permits, and the expansion of utility smart meters. So all this is incredible work. Let's give our technology folks a big round of applause for their work. And two of my first actions as mayor were to create the Technology and Innovation Commission as well as restructure our department. Just last month, we adopted Long Beach's first open data policy. And just yesterday, we unveiled Data LB, our new open data portal. Thanks to cutting edge technology, our city data is now more accessible to the public. Residents, entrepreneurs, and nerds like me will be able to download public data to innovate, solve problems, and create private solutions. And of course, we can't talk just about innovation without discussing the incredible work of our Long Beach innovation team. Generous support, that's probably them right there. Generous support from Bloomberg Philanthropies allowed us to hire a team that has worked to innovate economic development. Our innovation team has launched a new business portal called BizPort in partnership with Code for America. For the very first time, our city has mapped out all the steps required to plan and launch a business, putting all resources in one online place. We really are building a city of the future, and let's give our innovation team a big round of applause. <laughs> and in order to protect our city and our planet, we also must be prepared to aggressively fight climate change. <coughs> In my first state of the city address, I committed that Long Beach would develop a more comprehensive approach to climate change and resilience. Last year, under the leadership of Dr. Jerry Schubel from the Aquarium of the Pacific, we developed an adaptation and resiliency report that outlines the key impacts that Long Beach would face as climate change develops. We also joined the mayor's compact and agreed to set ambitious targets for greenhouse gas emissions reductions. In addition, Long Beach Transit will be one of the first large urban agencies to use a fleet of battery electric buses this year. <laughs> These zero emissions vehicles are the first toward the goal of an entirely clean, feet, tr clean fleet transit route by 2020 here in Long Beach. And this, city, and this city is also expanding the use of electric vehicles and just announced a plan to distribute 330 electric vehicle chargers to Long Beach residents provided by Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> I also want to applaud the Board of Harbor Commissioners for authorizing an unprecedented $46 million mitigation program to lessen the impacts of port-related pollution. No other U.S. seaport 
has committed as much funding for environmental mitigation. And I want to thank them for their leadership on this issue. And I also look forward to supporting them as they select a new chief executive that will continue to support our vision for a green and clean port. Let's give our board of art commissioners a big round of applause. And Long Beach is also leading the way in active transportation. In 2016, Long Beach was the only city in Southern California to be ranked in the top 10 nationally for walkability and bikeability. And to improve our sustainability, we completed 14 miles of bike lanes all across the city. And last year, we launched the Long Beach Bike Share Program. And users using these bikes, which I know you've all seen across the city, took 26,000 trips since the program started. And approximately 80,000 of you and others have participated in our Open Beach Streets festivals. Now, one of our key initiatives is also replacing all city street lights with energy efficient LED lights. We have already replaced 9,200 street lights and expect to replace the additional 15,000 by this October. Our water department, in talking about sustainability, our water department continues to lead the state in water conservation. Total water use in 2016 was 24% less than the 10 year average. Let's give our water commissioners and our department a big round of applause. And earlier this year, we also secured 30 million in grant funding for the design and construction of a new municipal urban stormwater treatment facility. The city is also planting more than 6,000 trees and increasing our solar power infrastructure. I'd also like to report, absolutely, go trees. <laughs> I'd, I'd also like to report that we need to continue to support urban farming efforts and explore ways to move towards zero waste across the city. <laughs> now, at last year's State of the City, I was thrilled to announce that we have finally, after 20 years, reached an agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers to do a study of our breakwater with the goal of restoring our coastal ecosystem. The study began in January, and later this year, the Army Corps will have the options and the models for all of you to review in the community. You have my commitment to fund efforts that will enhance our ecosystem, bring cleaner water to our shoreline, and bring more people to our beaches, while of course protecting our coastal homes and the Port of Long Beach. <laughs> and in what will be one of our largest legacies as a city and a state, we have begun planning for the restoration of the Los Angeles River. We are beginning to reimagine opportunities for nature, recreation, and water reclamation. It's going to be an amazing. Let's give them a round of applause. And as we look to the future, being good stewards of our earth means we must also reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. We know, we know that this won't happen overnight, but we must reduce our city's dependence on oil. This not only makes sense for the environment, but it also makes financial sense because we can't continue to count on oil as a major source of revenue for the city long term. We must, we must take action to protect ourselves and our planet. And as we focus on climate change and the important issues around the environment, the state of California is also trying to address two major challenges housing, and homelessness. While these challenges, of course, are related, they are different and complex. First, I want to mention housing. Homeownership home ownership in California is at its lowest rate since the 1940s. And one-third of renters 
are currently paying more than 50% of their income towards rent. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but cities are actually required through state housing policy to build and maintain affordable housing every single year. The truth is, the truth is that as we build, we know that we're not going to build much housing in parts of city that are the parts of the city that are already developed. The truth is, suburban communities across East Long Beach and most of Uptown are built out. Our housing growth and opportunities are mostly going to come in the downtown areas and in Central Long Beach. And as you all know, every single day, every single day, we're <laughs> We are welcoming new entrepreneurs, engineers, and high-income earners every single day. They're buying homes, they're buying lofts, and they're leasing apartments. And our local economy is benefiting from their investments, and we welcome them. But at the same time, at the same time as we welcome them, we need to ensure that the cooks who are making our meals at our favorite Long Beach restaurants, and the workers who are caring for our seniors and the workers that are cleaning in our, our hotel rooms, that they continue to have the opportunity to be a part of our community and our city. <laughs> These hardworking men and women are our neighbors. They make our community vibrant, diverse, and strong. Now, we have tried to address this challenge over the, over the last two years by building more than 1,800 new affordable units, preserving more than 2,000 existing units, second, mortgage, second mortgages to low and moderate low income first time home buyers. We need to continue that work, but we can also do more. Over the last year, the city has hosted community forums across the city, and we have assembled a housing study group to address this growing challenge. In February, city staff will be organizing a special city council study session to present the findings from the report and the community. I encourage everyone to get involved and to please remember that our city should be a place for everyone. California is also seeing a statewide homelessness crisis. In Long Beach, we have made some great strides in this area, particularly with homeless veterans. And in fact, as you probably heard, we have housed over 640 veterans just in the last two years. We are, we are one of the few communities across the country where every veteran who falls into homelessness has an opportunity to be placed into a home. But we also know that there's so much more to do. We see what's happening across not just the city, but cities across the state of California. First here in Long Beach, the first thing we're thinking about doing is something important. We're gonna be building a new shelter gathering place for those experiencing homelessness right next door to the multi-service center in West Long Beach. Now what this will do, what this will do will create a safe place to rest during the day after the shelters are closed. It also will be adjacent to services to help assist members of this community. And as you know, we've also had a rental shelter here in Long Beach for many, many years. But a shelter open only in the winter is not enough. I hope you agree that it's time for us in Long Beach to operate our own year-round shelter. Research around this issue shows that immediate shelter and housing first is the first and most important step to permanent housing. We all need to continue working on creative solutions to homelessness and to remember that people on our streets, the men and women and children on our streets, they have names, they deserve our respect and our care.
Now, I also want to say a few words about what holds the key to our future, and that's education. Long Beach, as you know, has one of the best public education systems in the country. Absolutely. Our local university, our local university ranks number five nationally in applications. In fact, more than 91,000 people applied to Cal State Long Beach just this last year. 91,000. Over at Long Beach City College, our former president just became the chancellor of the California Community Colleges. And we have one of the best school districts anywhere. Winner of the Broad Prize for Urban Education and consistently, as you all know, recognized as one of the best urban school districts in the country. Now, alone, these institutions are great, but together, they are amazing. That's why they created the Long Beach College Promise, which has helped inspire the America's College Promise and communities across the country. In the last two years, we have increased internship spots from 1,500 to 3,800. We have also added more than 900 public preschool seats. And just last week, we launched the Mayor's Fund for Education to ensure that every single family across our city has access to a quality preschool and early childhood education. I want to thank our local education leaders, our school board members, our college trustees, and our classroom teachers for all they do for our city. Let's give them a big round of applause. And before I close tonight, I want to introduce you to one of our residents. His name is Gus Orozco. Now, Gus immigrated to the United States from Mexico when he was two years old. He went to Long Beach schools and graduated from Wilson High School. After graduating from Wilson, he chose to serve our country. He joined the Army, where he was deployed to Iraq. He continues to serve to this day in the Army Reserves. And since coming home, he's graduated from Long Beach City College and is currently studying environmental science at Cal State Long Beach. Now, I'm very proud to also tell you that Gus also became an American citizen. <laughs> Gus represents the best of our nation, an immigrant living the American dream in a nation built by immigrants. He's making our community better every single day. Now, Gus is here tonight, so please join me in thanking Gus for everything Especially, of course, to our incredible citywide elected leaders, Charlie, to Laura, to Doug, to the great members of the city council. We are all in this journey together. Let's support each other. Let's help our neighbors. Let's help the poor in our community. And let's lead with caring. I know together that all of us can continue to build an even better Long Beach. We, I believe, are America's greatest city, and I couldn't be more proud to be your mayor. So I want to thank you all for being here. God bless you, God bless our country, and God bless Long Beach. Go Long Beach! Thank you.